Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another Commodity Insights podcast with the crew at Farmers Trading Company. Um, was hoping for a little more of an optimistic podcast this week with the price action in the grains and the nice little rally we had, but today was sure a disappointment for that. Um, looks like we had a nice pullback in both the corn and the beans and the wheat here with the beans going or the corn going down about eight to seven eight to seven cents and the beans going down about seventeen to fourteen cents there. Um, what do you think of this? grain market, Vince, is the rally over or is this just a little bit of a pullback and we're going to find some support here and push higher or what are your thoughts? Timing wise, I think hopefully it's nothing more than a pullback, but we have been overbought in both the corn and the beans. You've had a good rally. Uh, both of them maybe fell a little short of some of the target areas you're looking at, but one has to wonder if part of it isn't some liquidation ahead of Friday's supply demand or report. Uh, and again, you see, you have to have news every day, and we really haven't had a lot of news on Tuesday or Wednesday to get you going. So let's see what we do. But on corn-wise, I would think that lower 450s in that July needs to hold this. Uh, first key one is at 457 and three quarters, which was your January GAN low in there. Bean-wise, you know, you're hoping for 1260, didn't quite get there, but you're still in the 1250s. That was a pretty good number. What would they pull back? They could pull back 40, 50, 60 cents in a decent correction and still be in a, you know, still be a short-term uptrend. And over to you, Andrew, and both the corn and the bean markets, what were you seeing out there? Or was there news that kind of brought this on or just more of a technical thing today that people were taking profit ahead of the report on Friday or what were your thoughts? I think the majority of today would have been technical movement, especially when you look at a soybean market. Corn and wheat, I, I think you can attribute to a few factors that are going on out there. If you look at the wheat market, they are starting to get some decent rains going across parts of Kansas down in Oklahoma. Sounds like there's a, a fairly decent wheat crop on the way down there. So I think that could be putting a little bit of weight on this market, especially considering just how fast it's ran up here in the last week to 10 days. Uh, if you look at the export market, Egypt was in the market to buy some wheat here earlier in the week, and Russia was definitely the lowest offer out there. So that just expresses the point that the U.S. is not the cheapest wheat in the market. So why would our market get real excited about being bought up? And then finally, you know, I saw this morning the headline that China did approve some more gene edited wheat along with some more GMO corn varieties. And so that won't affect the market immediately, but looking more so down the road on a few of the more deferred new crop contracts that could put a little bit of weight on them just because if China starts producing more of their grains domestically, that reduces their need for imports from countries like the United States. And I had mentioned that report on Friday, the first supply and demand report for the new crop year. Um, did you hear any numbers out of that, Vince or Andrew, about uh, what the expectation is or what, what the trade will most likely do from that, Vince first? The only thing I've seen in there was you looked at carry out on both corn and beans. They were looking at raising it somewhat. I think you were 350,000, 350 million bushels on the corn, somewhere around 15 to 20 million on the beans for next year, which I, I think is expected. Part of that, you know, whether it's this year or next year is going to be part of what do we come back with that South American corn and bean crop at, you know, as far as the carry in number to make it work on that one. I think there's still lots of Jury still out maybe the best way to put it on what it's going to come at, especially when you look at Argentina with the uh, insect problems and the disease that the the insects have uh, put on that corn. You know, from what I've read, they're really going to have to get harvest done to have a good idea of what damage did they do. And one thing we've been kind of talking about in the office here is maybe some new crop corn and bean sales that we've had a lot of phone calls, I guess, about that. Do you think we're getting to those levels where we should consider some of that stuff, Andrew, or um, what are some numbers that you think might look good for making some sales? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to give specific numbers on where to start doing your sales, but are we in a general time frame where you could look at doing maybe 10 to 15% of your expected new crop production? It's maybe not a terrible idea to get some of that done prior to this Friday report. And then, you know, if the report turns out to be incredibly bullish, then you can just reevaluate your plan from there and adjust. But is it a bad idea to have a few bushels priced right now? It's probably not a terrible place to get something started anyway. 
And then moving on to the livestock markets here, we'll look at the cattle market first. It's been a very jerky market, I would say. It seems like there's a lot of knee-jerk reactions to headline news and we're up one day big and then down next. Is there stability in the future of that market or is that just kind of the way it's going to trade for the time being? Or what are your thoughts there, Vince? I think sideways to lower is maybe where you're going to be at. We could get a little bit of a rally into mid next week around that 15th or 16th but i think they could still see pressure in that especially in the fed cattle market through mid uh, june at the earliest maybe late june and then you think it would straighten out but as we look at it the feeder when you go to the feeder cattle those sales are up and down every day the north stays pretty good the south has its quirks in there but and you look at these guys at the sale barn especially the north they they're just so bullish i'm not quite sure which way they should turn in here but the not getting rewarded by looking at the board if they want to try to price them and all. But again, there was a little bit of cash done on Tuesday in the north at 185 and 295, which is steady ish. South right now is really looking for 186 to 187. We'll see if they can win that battle. And over to you, Andrew, with this choppy price action, has that developed any chart patterns or formations that you've been watching or anything there that you see as support or resistance? It's to the point right now where it depends on what direction you want the market to go. And I could draw the chart to give you the answer that you wanted is just about the, the real way to put it right now. If I if I was to stick my neck out on a direction, I'd say it's going higher versus lower. But I'm going to play the devil's advocate on the livestock market here. If you're purely a, a cattleman, if you're in the sale barn all the time, seeing what things are doing, you would expect futures prices to go higher. That's I think that's just what the expectation would be based on what we've seen in the sale barn. But if you're purely looking at it from the chart, if you look at it from some of the world and global news out there, then I think that's why you see some of this really choppy and sideways to maybe lower trade. There is some stuff going on both in the chart and in the world that could point to things not necessarily going straight higher like some people believe. So I think we need to keep that in mind as we look at these sale bar numbers that it's not going to go straight higher like it was last summer. And then uh, moving on, uh, looking at the hog market here, Andrew, is that chart painting a better picture for maybe some directional movement or what are your thoughts with those charts? It's working hard to try and find a base or some sort of stability on the chart right now. Uh, the, the fund traders are still very long their positions. I haven't looked at the most recent commitment of traders report, but I know there's still plenty long here. If you look at just purely like the June chart, you can find maybe some support on that 100 day moving average. We keep on trying to chop below it and then it comes back and closes above it. So the market seems to be respecting that level. And just from a more so a timing standpoint, this is a good place for this thing to try and find some legs underneath of it. Could it drop a little bit lower? Yeah, stochastics are giving it a little room. MACDs are giving it some room. But uh, longer term, I think it should still be a healthy market for us. And over to you, Vince. Is there any fundamental stuff that you've been hearing in that hog market or any news that you'd like to share? I think the biggest thing we've seen over the past two weeks in that hog market is the belly market has been really weak near its low it's been for quite a while. I think that's what's pulling it down. As we looked at Wednesday, we started the firm that cut out up a little bit and hopefully we can hold it, but still at $96 area in that June, I think should be good support. Not that we can't go through that, but uh, right now, just not a lot to propel those bulls to come back and jump in. And then, uh, Closing thoughts on any of these commodities, Andrew, anything that you're seeing out there, anything that you'd like to share or thoughts? Just a surprise that I had over the last day or two with, with everything going on between Israel and Iran, given I know that there's been talks of ceasefire and things aren't quite as escalated as they once were. I am still surprised that the crude oil market is not pushing a little bit higher than it is at the moment, it's trading right at 79 bucks a barrel. Stochastics are just about at rock bottom. Uh, we do continue to hold support on that 100 and 200 period moving average. So maybe it's just working on a base right now before it can do anything beyond that. But it's just been a bit of a surprise to me that that hasn't been a stronger market. And over to you, Vince, the same question. Are there any closing thoughts on any of these markets or anything you'd like to share? 
we just have to see what the USDA report gives us on Friday morning. I think any good pullbacks in the grains, unless something changes, I think there could be one more rally left. Just looking at it from a seasonal standpoint. So if you if you need to reown some things, or if you need some feed needs, look at some of those areas. Otherwise, not a lot out there. We're in that choppy sideways mode, but it does feel a little more positive in the grains of the last couple of weeks than it had before. I think that's going to do it for this week's podcast. If we could be of any further assistance to you, give us a call at Farmers Training Co. on number 605-996-6500 or check out the website farmerstradingco.com for more information. Thank you.